Hello, my name is Emma Berry and I am an e-learning developer and instructional designer. And today I am going to take you through how I created my interactive office activity. So if you follow me on social media or have been on my website, you've probably seen um, this, the finished result of this activity. But in sort of a quick nutshell, essentially this activity was based around the morph transition and creating kind of smooth zoom in and zoom out effects um almost like a sort of hidden object style game uh so the learner clicks on the office hazards the screen zooms in and they do actions they answer questions um and then when they zoom out the hazard has disappeared so the aim of the activity is for the learner to find all the hazards and clear the office essentially. Now you can do this without incorporating the more of transition, but I really wanted to kind of challenge storyline and challenge my skills to be able to create a much smoother kind of fluid zoom in zoom out effect as opposed to maybe like a fade. Um, because unfortunately the more of transition is not available on storyline yet. So let's get into how i created this and if you haven't seen the finished result of this activity then you can jump over to my website which i will link um, on this video and have a quick look um, i'm not going to play the recording of it here because um, we're going to focus on how i brought it all to life so let's get into it okay so first things first before you get into storyline and even before you get into powerpoint you need to kind of plan your interactivity you need to plan what it is the learner is going to click on. Now, I've seen a lot of people kind of using AI generated images for these kind of activities, um, which you can totally do. Um, but what I wanted to do was actually create my own illustration so that I could really kind of fully edit everything um, and sort of adjust bits to suit my needs. So the first thing I did was just draft up this office scene. And you know, when you're recreating this activity, you don't have to use office, you can use whatever it is that you want to base your activity around. And during the instructional design process, I had planned carefully what it was, like what the hazards were that I wanted the learner to interact with. And these were carefully drawn into the illustration. So we've got like post-it note, we've got a, a document on the table, a little ID card. I also created a blank version of this office scene. And this is actually the one that forms the base image in my storyline file, because these little interactive elements here, so for example, our case files are exported as separate vector illustrations and added on top. And the reason for this is so that you don't have to use hotspots. Um, to add interactivity. So this little illustration here, for example, is imported into Storyline um, as its own kind of entity, own file. And from there, the learner can click on it and I can set a trigger up for an action to happen. This just makes it a lot easier than having to kind of add hotspots around these elements. Um, and it's a bit more accessible as well. So the blank illustration is my base. And this is what the illustration will look like on the storyline screen once I've imported all these extra elements. Another reason why I import these as separate entities, so our case file, for example, is so that I can amend the states as well. So that when the learner clicks on the project case file, I can set the state to hidden because they've then interacted with it. The hazard has been amended. So once you're happy with all your elements, um, and all the kind of different bits that your learner is going to interact with. You have your sort of clickable interactions and you've also got your blank image. We can then jump into PowerPoint and start creating our videos. So let's go. Okay, so we are on to our next step now and this is where we add the transition. So this is where we put in the morph transition to do the zoom in and out of our interactive elements. So the first thing you'll need to do is import your base image. And you'll notice this is the base image with all of our sort of hazards or clickable interactions in. And this is because we want to mimic what the learner is going to see on Storyline um, so that it is kind of a smooth transition. 
So you'll need three slides. So this one here with our base image, you can duplicate and we'll have it twice. And then sandwiched in the middle is going to be the zoomed in version of you know, what we're gonna focus on. So for this example, we've got this document here. And if I just zoom the slide out, you can see what I've done is just made the image really big. Um, and it then creates an effect of being really zoomed in on the slide. Now, this is also why it's good to work with vector images, um, because you can scale vector images up without losing quality. If you did this with a JPEG, you would lose quality um, quite quickly. And obviously, we have to be mindful we're exporting this as a video, which also can impact quality as well. So when creating your images, it's best to include kind of minimal kind of text or detail um, and to kind of keep the image fairly simple because uh, any detail can be lost during the export phase. Okay, so now we need to add our transition. So on your middle slide here, where you've got your zoomed in um, part, go to transitions and apply the morph transition. And if we just zoom back in so we can preview this, you'll notice, there we go, we've got a nice smooth zoom in on our document. And on the last slide, you also want to have the morph transition and this is so that we then zoom back out again. So if I preview, you'll see we zoom out from the document and we're back to our main office scene again. And this is gonna be the bit that kind of takes us um, back to our main kind of office scene and back to where the learner can click on the different hazards. And it is really as simple as that. Um, I've set the duration of each slide to two seconds. Um, so that seems to be kind of quite a nice smooth uh, timing. And then all you need to do is go to file, export and create video. And we want it HD and then just click create video and save it wherever you need to. And you'll end up with um, a cut, you know, quite a few sort of very short, so they're usually about two or three seconds, the videos, um, because you need to repeat this process for every single little hazard or clickable thing or area that you want to zoom into. Um, I think for this one, I ended up with, I think it was seven different videos, but it's super quick. All you need to do is essentially replace this middle slide and with your zoomed in element um, and just repeat that process. Okay, and now we can jump into Storyline. Right, so the final step for creating this activity is to put it all in Storyline. So the first thing you'll notice is that I have one slide that acts as kind of my uh, hub, you could say. It's the slide that the learner will repeatedly go back to after they have um, interacted with each office hazard. For each hazard, I created a separate slide. And this is because if you did it all on this main office scene, you would have so many layers and this allows me to kind of manage my interaction a bit more and to manage triggers and um, states without this one slide getting just completely rammed with um, layers and whatever. So let's click into this main office scene. And this is why we needed our blank image uh, to begin with, because you'll notice that all of these little um, office hazards are separate images that will all have their own triggers. So I can move this one out of the way. And this, like I said before, is so that the learner can easily kind of interact with a, a hazard and also so that I can amend the states. So for example, once the learner clicks on the project case file, they get taken to the slide for the project case file. And there's a state that tells this one to hide because they've interacted with it. So that when they come back to the slide after they've done the activity on the case file, uh, this will be hidden. So they've resolved the hazard. Um, and it also allows me to amend the uh, variable up here to say the number of hazards that are found. So that when the learner has found all the hazards, a little message comes up and says, well done, you've done it. So this is just a static image. Um, that allows you to layer your interaction on top. So let's jump to a slide and see how the video works. So let's jump to our case file. So you'll notice that the base 
image is actually our video. So our really short MP4 video. And I've added a cue point. Now, if I drag the playhead, you'll notice we get our zoom in. So if I just go back out again, you can see it zooms in. Now, once the video has zoomed in fully, what you wanna do is add a cue point to tell the video to stop. So for this one, it's just when the timeline reaches cue point one, pause video one. And what this does is then stops the video from carrying on because if it did, it would just zoom straight back out again. And we don't want it to do that until the learner has done all the kind of activities or interactive bits they need to do for this specific um, office hazard. So I don't tell the um, timeline to pause though. And that's because I want um, other elements to come in. So this hotspot, for example, um, a text box or some buttons. Um, so we want the timeline to carry on. We just want the video to pause. So the learner then clicks on this hotspot and then um, I've added a couple of layers in so that they have to do different things, answer different questions. And then on our last layer, we have um, our next button. And what this does is send the learner back to this main case file slide. It also sets the trigger, so the variable, um, to be true, which then tells our main slide, so our main office scene, um, to hide the project files to say that, you know, this hazard has been successfully interacted with, the learner's done everything. So once the learner then comes back to this main slide, what you want to do is have the video play again. So how do you do that? So what I do is have a button. So when that variable changes, so the variable to set the case file as complete changes, we then show, change the state of this instruction rectangle, this kind of bottom bar changes to continue. So well done, you've secured the folder away. Let's click next and explore more of the office. And this next button here will appear. Then when the learner clicks the next button, this triggers the video to play. So when the user clicks button one, play video one, and then it sets the state of this button to hidden, the rectangle to hidden, um, and clears the screen of any other extra little bits that I've added on top. The video then carries on playing and we get our zoom out effect, which goes back to our main office scene. And there's one more trigger you need, which is when video one completes, you jump back to your main office slide. And what this does is create that seamless transition between the two. And you'll notice none of the slides have transitions on them because you want this to feel very much like you're actually only on one slide and you're not jumping between multiple slides. The other thing to note is that after the learner has interacted with a hazard, they are not able to go back to it. Now, this could or could not be a problem. I mean, they can't, once they've clicked on an interaction or a hazard, they can't leave the slide until they've done everything required of that interaction anyway. Um, but the reason I've done this is just to avoid any problems with the video kind of going a bit, a bit funny. Um, you could set these slides as reset to initial state so that if the learner did click back into it, it would reset the video and reset everything. Um, but I just to avoid any hiccups, once the learner has clicked on an interaction, um, they can't then go back to it uh, once they've finished it. So let's just view the project just so I can demonstrate how this actually looks. Um, and because I'm doing it in preview and not in review, you'll notice that the colours seem a bit off, but once it's exported, um, you don't tend to have a problem with that. For some reason, Articulate's preview messes with the colour grading. Okay, so let's just wait for it to catch up. There we go. So let's go back to our project case file. So if we click on it, you notice it zooms in nice and smooth. So our colleague has left a project case out. Let's select it to explore. So let's select it. And then we have our layers, which make us do something, even though I'm just going to skim past this quickly. 
and select the filing cabinet and close it again. And there we go. So we go next and that triggers our variable, sends us back here and we've got our sort of end message. So let's click next to explore more of the office. So clicking next triggers the video, makes everything else come out and we've got our um, filing cabinet up here and you can see we're back to our main image and back to our other clickable interactions and there we go it is that easy it's really not that time consuming at all um, actually using the videos the hardest part is actually thinking of and adding all the extra interaction on top um, the actual transition part and the videos is really simple um, so I would really urge people to give it a go um, I really like the end result I think it looks really smooth and really nice um, and I hope this has been helpful so thank you very much for watching